So digital approach to chronic disease management. Now, this is a huge sentence. And uh, as, as Olga said, this is, this, these sessions are uh, an appetizer. I mean, each one of the slides that I'm passing here could do, could, could do a half a day uh, presentation. Uh, so, you know, bear with me, I'll be macro, but uh, I'll try also to give some, some practical examples. So I've done, I've done my introduction, um, just uh, for you to know these are the organizations I'm cooperating or had experience on. Uh, I will jump uh, immediately to the, <clears throat> to the topic. Um, now, chronic disease management. Um, it's the interesting part of the market is that it, it's a clear market with, with very high costs and, and very concrete challenges. I'll, I'll explain in a bit, um, but it's also a recurring business because it's, it's a chronic, the chronic symptoms, right? Now, um, World Health Organization um, came out with a, with a fact uh, last year that said that people, um, third, three-fourths of all deaths worldwide would actually be accounted on chronic diseases um, problematics uh, from 2020. Now, we are in the world post-COVID. We don't know exactly the statistics. It also doesn't matter. The point is, it's, it's a growing market and a recurring business. And when you speak with, uh, uh, with doctors, and you really have a trouble here. You have, you have actually... Uh, three clusters of the population. You have the already sick ones that you want to balance. And by the way, 80% um, of, the, of the problem here is that people, people are not taking their medication on time or at, at all. So you can already imagine uh, what kind of uh, technology could, could help here with alerts on medication, etc. But the first cluster would be we need to be balancing the already sick people. The second thing, we would need to look at the borderline people and, 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 and understand how we can um, prevent them from reaching a, a severe case, a severe situation. And the third cluster would be how do we educate the healthy ones to keep healthy habits. Now, uh, I like the sentence that everyone uses that says, if only we could eat more, uh, uh, we could eat better, we could exercise more, and we could sleep with more quality and manage our stress levels, we would not have any problem in our life. But everyone knows that, uh, that uh, the reality is much more complex, especially after uh, the age of 40, where you already have your set habits and, and good luck with impacting on how your behaviors will change. Now, digital health as a solution. And, and, and I've, I've, I've been in this space for, for almost five years. Um, I actually now, um, I understand that we might have a good angle to explore. Um, by the way, one of the segments that I prefer talking about in digital health is digital therapeutics, which is actually the, the space that leads with, uh, with actual um, evidence-based uh, software interactions that are on the one hand um, clinical trials, but on the other hand um, happen in, in real life. So, meaning the fact that you can interfere real time to the right patient with the right treatment, with the right healthcare professional really makes a difference. So digital therapeutics, and there's a bunch of companies uh, playing in this space, probably Livongo is, is the, the, the biggest one making most of the knots. And we'll talk about a few examples in a bit. Uh, this space now became very, very relevant um, in the world post COVID. But before we talk about the, 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 the momentum and the opportunity with, with COVID, um, Let's, let's really understand the challenges because the, at the end, the devil is in the details here. So challenge number one, and if you guys know about everyone suffering from a chronic condition, you know that it's never one chronic condition. A person suffering from diabetes, normally they have um, problems with their sleep, their stress levels are not balanced, they have problems with their heart, etc., etc., etc. 
So the demand from the expectation from the healthcare provider and the payer is, okay, we need a, a, a service, a portfolio that actually handles a multi-disease that is connecting multiple devices because we need different devices to capture different parameters like blood glucose levels and uh, uh, hypertension and, uh, and uh, sleep apnea and, uh, and, and, and stress and whatever. And we need to have multiple services. We cannot just depend on coaching by humans. We need to have help on automation. We need to have uh, AI that uh, handles uh, patient privacy policy and doctor liability. So it's very, very, very um, heavy and complex. And the second part of it is that we are dealing with very, very traditional organization structures that are used to work on a certain way, that studied a certain theory, and they have a different prototype of health economics. So if we, from all this, we can see that maybe the patient cooperation would be the simplest thing to solve. To handle provider expectation and payers reimbursement is a much, much uh, uh, difficult space. Now, COVID-19, what, what, what happened here? So we certainly understood that the alternative that we're facing uh, put us in a situation that people could not move and go to their you know, sessions with their care, caregivers on clinics or hospitals. Um, suddenly it became obvious that digital channels and digital tools uh, became very, very relevant. The patients started to adopt this kind of behaviors. This, that something happened, opened in the provider and healthcare side whereby you know, hospitals and clinics were ready to train their staff into doing stuff that they didn't do till now. And we captured the payer attention. So you, you probably, you, you, some of you know, I mean, since the beginning of 2019 already, there was a lot of um, um, generous codes on telemedicine, but during the COVID, this was even more boosted uh, because there's a, a clear understanding that telehealth is here to stay, home monitoring is here to stay. We just don't know exactly uh, how much and, and what is the headcount of it, but we understand that this is the new world. Now, okay, so now what? Now what do we need to do to grab this, uh, to, to grab this opportunity? So we have a window to scale our digital offerings. And here I'm talking to the startups part of uh, the, the, the audience. However, um, we need to think how technology um, that we already have can be layered with simple workflows and, 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 and with, with a clear uh, goal to solve extra market barrier, barriers after the, all the dust settle uh, after the COVID. And there's many people talking about the triple aim. You probably are familiar with it, which is you need to have an offering that addresses both clinical outcomes, uh, provider to patient to provider satisfaction, everyone needs to be happy uh, and adhere. Uh, and of course you need to show ROI or that their hospitals reduce their costs, whatever the business model is in, in the market. Um, so whatever we do, we need to be looking at the workflows and, 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 and the devil is really here. Uh, it's not enough that we have a solution. Um, most of the, of the, of the um, uh, barriers we have is not uh, by signing the commercial agreement, is to integrate the actual technology uh, inside of a hospital or whatever. So we need to be very focused on engagements with clinical value that is measurable on, on, on these monetization exits that are clear and, and the mindset of the provider and the payer that currently is very, very favorable. Just an example, um, I'm just checking the time because I, okay, um, I'm fine. So uh, just as an example, okay, for the state, I mean, I don't know if everyone is familiar with chronic diseases, uh, I'll, I'll just give an example of type two diabetes, which is, um, 
a chronic condition that it, it's triggered um, and it's, the glucose in the blood uh, goes up or down, uh, triggered by the way you eat, uh, the amount of exercise, um, sleep, stress, everything we talked before. So in the traditional world, um, you know, uh, patients would be using uh, glucose monitors that are not connected with smartphones. Uh, they will probably be using a piece of paper to write down what they eat and how do they sleep. Uh, they are completely disconnected from their healthcare professionals. They actually see them once a quarter and they are not engaged with their programs. Now, in the new world of digital health, so we can create this increased experience of a smart device that is uh, showing uh, an obvious correlation between your food diary and your exercise diary with your BG blood glucose levels. You have a whole integrated program with your caregiver that is also able to uh, actually chat with you uh, when, when relevant in severe cases. And all this uh, reimbursed by very generous uh, uh, codes. I'm talking about US, most of my conversation is about US. Um, um, and and uh, but, but the, the point here is that the two barriers that I was talking before are, are critical here. First is we have reimbursement, and the second, this, this window of attention of, of, of the providers is critical, okay? Um, now, action items. Um, I'm not going to give all the examples. Um, I, I prefer to leave time for uh, questions if needed. Um, action item number one, I would say that um, um, while moving from medical technology to digital health, we need to be thinking, um, our mindset need to be, how do we manage these relationships better between the patient and the provider and the patient? Okay, the, the, the feedback loop is critical, whereby we need to be collecting the right data, we need to be reflecting the right insights, and we need to, we need to be facilitating all this interchange. Uh, we talked before about Livongo is really an interesting uh, company with a holistic solution for the employer part of the marketing in the US. They are aggregating different uh, uh, chronic diseases, they are buying uh, connected devices and, and enlarging their offering. Um, there's also other companies like Peer Therapeutics, uh, very interesting in, in the way they revolutionized the, the prescription uh, side of the market. Uh, but we don't need to be uh, very creative in order to create a, a better workflow. Um, it's, i give you an example of what we did at Dario. We just sat and understood that the patient sometimes doesn't even know how to operate the device and to enjoy from all the features in the app. Sit, uh, set up the device, help him navigate, uh, automatically refill what they need, and actually you can... Today, with the COVID-19, you can actually reimburse for that. Um, Itamar Medical, <clears throat> the company I join now, it's amazing work uh, uh, we're doing in, in the way we understood that a normal sleep study for apnea can take something like four months. We actually reduced it in two weeks by understanding all the barriers of pre-study, study, post-study interpretation and, and, and therapy, and etc. I mean, I'll, I'll put it as aside, but the, the point here is that uh, customer intimacy, and here the customer is not just the provider, it's also the end user and their interaction between them. Second action item, we need to be excellent in the way we operate this interaction. It needs to be bulletproof, and it's not just technically, it needs to um, uh, respect the clinical guidelines. And this is a, a discussion for half a day, and there's companies out there very interesting uh, that are just uh, operating in this, in this part of the business. How to make a better integration of clinical guidelines and, and, and technology. Uh, third action item, I would say, um, uh, we all need to be very humble and understand that we don't know everything, especially in healthcare where it's such a regulated space. 
so many liability topics. Uh, um, uh, we have to be advising with, with very strong people in each of the categories. We need to do this before we start developing. And once we do it, we need to be validating whatever we want to do with external people out there. And this will make sure that we will be leaders in the market and we will bring value to the, to the market. So takeaways. We have a clear market, chronic disease management. It's growing, it's recurring. Uh, we like recurring. Um, we have a good positioning here with digital health, specifically with digital therapeutics. We have very relevant solutions out there. I just named a few, but there's tons. Uh, I truly believe in the part in partnering between them. Uh, also another topic. Um, we have momentum with post-COVID. We need to start simple, focus on the barriers and this patient to provider to patient uh, uh, relationship. The devil is in the details. We need a network of experts in-house and outside, really uh, QAing whatever we do. And uh, we need to, to be very consistent with the execution, be aware of the market access and the trends out there. I think this way we can nail it. Thank you.